Google plays like the cube. Family, it's your favorite queer radio personality, Anna Deshawn, and this is Queer News, your favorite weekly news pod where race and sexuality meet politics, culture, and entertainment. Y'all know, I've been running our Queer News listenership survey for a few weeks now. Probably closer to a month, huh? Thank you so much to the 40 people, that's right, 40 people, have completed the survey. Now, all of you all are entered to win that $50 gift card, okay? Now, the information y'all have been given, okay, has been giving. I am so grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, this has got me hungry for more, okay? So, like I said, we're at 40, which is three more than last week. Just three people, okay? But we're trying to get to 100. For context, five to 600 of y'all listen faithfully every week. Now, I've put the survey link in my IG profile on E3's IG profile on the TikTok pages, okay? Yo, you can get this survey link absolutely anywhere, and I really need you to take it, okay? It's going to take about 7 to 10 minutes, to be honest, and I'm going to be closing it on December 31st at midnight, okay? The link is in the show notes, but, you know, you can find it anywhere, like I said, so please, please decide to take the survey because I want to keep making this pod better, and I can only do that with you, and I want to do more of what you want to, okay? Thank you so much in advance. If you believe in the work we do, if you believe LGBTQ stories need to be amplified, if you love and respect how I report on the news and tell our stories, join the Q Crew. The Q Crew is our queer news community where you receive a weekly email sharing our top queer news stories and an unedited video from me about our top news and exclusive interviews. The Q Crew helps to supplement the cost of this here pod, okay? Hosting, editing, marketing, PR, travel, all the things. Of course, there's a link in the show notes. I know y'all know I have been in the midst of the holiday tiring down, okay? I am enjoying rest for hours and hours at a time without looking at a computer. I have been enjoying relaxation, playing Monopoly, (laughs) <laughs> on our Nintendo Switch with my wife and reflection season where I'm talking to friends you know about this past year highlighting things that stand out to me that were special extra special moments this rest relaxation and reflection season has been everything I needed and I am really looking forward to this upcoming week of doing more of that you know and truly I hope you are too okay but Like I promised, I'm not going to leave y'all with nothing on this feed. (laughs) And so today, I'm dropping part one of the special end of the year recap I did on the Bad Queers pod. We literally went month by month and highlighted our top queer news stories. All right. So part one will take you through June, which includes (laughs) as my homies at the Bad Queers pod, Chris and Shayna Say, Ron DeSatan, okay, trying to come for Disney. The beginning of the George Santos saga, Janelle Monae and Beyonce giving us their talents. Good news from Brittany Griner, Bills, 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 Too Many Lives Lost, the L Word Generation Q finale, and so much more, like, for real. We talked about so much. It's been a year for us queers, you know? And so I'm going to drop part two next week. Yeah, and that'll take us from July until December. So family, I just want y'all to know how much I love the Bad Queers Pod with Shana and Chris. And if you don't follow and subscribe, just do yourself a favor this holiday season. Okay, go ahead, go over to the feed. You know what I'm saying? Follow, subscribe. When you listen to a couple of episodes, go ahead. You know, rate, review, okay? We talking about fives here. (laughs) They're also across social media, TikTok, IG. I love seeing them there. And we got to support each other. We all we got, you know? So here's to you continuing to enjoy this holiday season. I'll talk to y'all next week. And please, please go take our survey, okay? Okay. Peace. This is Shayna. And Chris. And we are Bad Queers. If you came out of the closet and got put in a box of stereotypes you don't belong to, then welcome to the Bad Queers Club. 
we appreciate you for doing this. But you know, we can never do our end of year episode without having our friends join us. So once again, we welcome back Anna Deshawn. Anna's pronouns anything respectful is a multi-award and Ambi award winning podcast producer and host. She is also a Chicago born social entrepreneur who builds streaming platforms which center and celebrate BIPOC and QTPOC creatives. Media has always been her passion and in 2009 she turned that passion into a reality when she founded E3 Radio, an online radio station playing queer music and reporting on queer news with an intersectional lens. She expanded her media reach when she co-founded The Cube, a podcast production company and curated platform to discover the best music and podcasts by BIPOC and QTPOC creatives. Most recently, Anna was inducted into the Chicago LGBTQ Hall of Fame because of her commitment to the LGBTQ community. Anna is determined to ride media into its next era by utilizing digital media streams to tell the stories and play the music that deserves to be heard. Whew, y'all, we made it to the end of 2023. Um, a little pre-pro background. This was traumatic for us <laughs> to put together <laughs> this recap. There's a lot of shitty news in 2023, but we're going to go through the good and the bad. And no better person to have with us than Anna Deshawn. And yeah, Anna, how is putting your list together? Just your feelings <laughs> going into this. It was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> what? It was, so, it was so much bad news. I mm. think I have blocked so much of it out. Yeah. And then so going through all the stories, so my process is I go through all the stories I covered and I go through TikTok and I'm just like, woo, yeah, what a year. And I mm-hmm. and it was really the beginning of the year. It was really sucky. Okay. And I was like, good. It really yeah. set the tone. It yeah. set the tone. Yeah. I feel like I should... I'll kick it off with Tyree Nichols. That was in January, the murder of Tyree Nichols. Right. Just we got to get into it, you know, (laughs) so y'all can end with some good stuff. And maybe that's kind of an order we can rhythm. We can work into starting shitty and ending great. (laughs) Um, But (laughs) rest in peace to Tyree Nichols and prayers to his family. They're still going through litigation. But Tyree Nichols was murdered by five um, Memphis former now former Memphis police officers um, who were also brought up on federal charges. Um, There is an update to it that one of the officers pled guilty. Um, The other ones are awaiting trial, but um, more of the same. You know, we are a podcast that started in 2020 and though police brutality is nothing new, um, you know, we started around George Floyd and unfortunately to open up this year, more of the same. So um, Tyree Nichols, again, this is in progress uh, as of December, um, but the officers were charged. Um, I guess a unique thing to talk about this, people were like, oh, there are five black men that were the officers. And it's just like, oh, no, they're <laughs> they're racist, too. Like it's, you know, we have to watch out for black officers in a lot of cases, too. And this is one of those cases. So horrible news to start off the year video was disturbing um but as of now they're you know they're moving towards justice for that for Tyree Nichols and his family so hope we get to it yep. I mean the facts that. are police have all bi- types of bias we all got bias but mm. I don't care what color you are it's your culture it becomes a part of your culture your work becomes your culture yeah and you, you begin to take on the same biases that you may have into the force trying to say, I'm going to fight against. And then you find yourself in the midst of it all. Right with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The good apples are losing the fight as they normally do. They always good apples, the police, whereas we all know good and bad apples, but the good apples are actually scared of the bad apples too. Um, And that's the bad apples are um, colorless and genderless. So it's one of these cases. So other January news fuckery. Um, I feel like George Santos actually came into national view, the fuckery of George Santos. Um, th- in January, he was asked to resign, which kicked off nearly a year long process to remove him. Um, do y'all remember the first time y'all just heard of George Santos <laughs> and where it just came into to view? And what were your thoughts when mm. you saw this grift, this scam mm. uh, going on? It escalated so fast was the thing it was like he came out of nowhere and just said all this wild shit and then we started to uncover the layers of his life and that the closeted drag queen life and 
he was spouting all of this anti-gay rhetoric, but we were like, are you on our team or not? Do you hate yourself or not? Where did you come from? And how did we get here? (laughs) And how are you in office? Like I, there was so much research I had to do around this man because there was so much information that happened within like a 72 hour period. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, It was wild. Especially since he's coming out of New York. Okay. You would think the vetting process is a little bit more vigorous, you know, you know, no, 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 (laughs) it came out of nowhere. The lies were carried. The layers of lies. Um, (laughs) Y'all could take that as a documentary because it will be a documentary. (laughs) Layers of lies. Lifetime's going to call you and and be like, excuse me. (laughs) Listen, pay it. Send the check. But like the things he lied about were so unnecessary. Mm -hmm. And we'll get to it because again, this kicked off a year long process to get rid of him. But the biggest things, especially sitting in December, is like he really lied his way to the House of Representatives. Like he really was on there for solid collecting salary too. You know, um, he had a little bit of a run. <laughs> he had a run. He stayed in. I thought he was going to be out quicker once this came about, and it was so blatant that he was lying and all the scamming he did to get there. But nope, not America. They were like, wait a minute. Not America. <laughs> Wait a he minute. said challenge accepted. There's a story here. <laughs> like, let's drag this out. So, yeah. We, we love a, practicing due process mm, when it's convenient. convenient. When it's convenient. There we go. <laughs> that part. Mm. Yeah. Oh, George. <laughs> it's a strange oh, George. Man. That was still. <sighs> that was like an AOC territory. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Wildness. What, what's the good? What's the you good know? in the January? Let's well, I mean, the I, don't, I don't know if I'm at the good. Yeah, mm-hmm. I feel like Anna's is at the good and mine is at like the medium. It's, it's the medium. So we're just going to pile it on. Um, because one, we did not realize that at this moment we saw the end of an era with the L word generation Q. This is when the season finale happened. Months later, mm-hmm. it was announced that we were getting we were getting no more and we were left. With with so much and. uh more questions than answers, honestly. They, they gave us a queer-ass wedding in that season finale. You know, all of the times that they had been waiting, and they were like, this is fine. You, y'all have said enough, right? That's really what we worked for in real life, was just getting a queer marriage. And so we worked towards getting Bet and Tina married in the Elward Generation Q, and they said that's enough episodes. So we're just aligning on both of those sides of things. So that was, that was when the Elward Generation Q came to a close. And also, this was when... Uh, the Velma show came out and they, it was came with a lot of mixed opinions and, and skepticism. And a lot of folks did not like the series, even though we had waited all this time for us to have confirmation that Velma was queer. And it was just met with both the mix of excitement and skepticism, which was unfortunate. What do you think you ever will end up watching it? I didn't with Velma, but I was going to ask y'all what y'all think the legacy of um, Gen Q, not L word, because the L word is cemented with all of its problems. It's still iconic within the lesbian community. But what about Gen Q? Like, what's the final verdict on Gen Q? Do you think they could have kept it? Or do you think it was like, OK, it's good. You made you put out some fires, but I don't know. Where do y'all land with it? I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the series. I I thought it was good. I think they could have kept it going. Uh, but we love to start something and cancel it. So okay. <laughs> every party. <laughs> we can't have nice things. Party. The way. <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah. So I think it really I, I think it really sucks because I I enjoyed the like the generational connections that they yeah. were able to do really well. Mm-hmm. Um, that we don't often see period on television or film is this it's like either there's a spinoff and then like no one from the spinoff is in the news situation you know or the, but it, it isn't always done well and so I, I enjoyed it um, so it, I was bummed out when they didn't pick it back up yeah I agree I agree I enjoyed that thoroughly I also enjoyed how it got our community back together as well over something that was familiar and it was also fun to see the new age queers coming in and being introduced to the l word in this way i hope they never went back and watched the other ones i hope we just got to stick with that ourselves but for them to have this and to have the representation of characters on screen 
you know, I know there was a lot of critique there, but they, it was there. It was there. We were still looking for more, especially dark skinned black lesbian representation. We were still fighting for it. I think we will continue to be fighting for it for at least another few years. But it was great to see all of the different types of relationships, how the intersectionality worked and to just go and be in rooms with queers who really wanted to watch it together. Like I got to see multiple of the opening of the season and the finale of the seasons in theaters in really cool speakeasy bars at full events it was it was great to be able to have those moments for us and to just like be in the space to watch those things together so anything that brings us together brings me joy i like that i like that i think it was it was necessary to me because even going back and kind of writing some of the wrongs they still left some things on the table but maybe they would have gotten to it if they weren't canceled but i think Mm -hmm. overall it was entertaining and i did like the like intergenerational aspect of it, you know? Um, yeah. And it kept the hot sex scenes. Let's be clear. Okay. And let's be clear. Okay. But, and that's needed. And Kaylani. So, <laughs> you know, she if was. nothing else. She was. My goodness. <laughs> theme of the year. If nothing Not else. Not popping in my head clear as day. Kaylani, <laughs> yeah. Who needs their, their own show. But, mm. you know, work on that. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. But yeah, I think I think Gen Q was necessary and um, grateful for what we got out of it. Like, I, th- I think it's cool. You know, it's hard to reboot, uh, you know, iconic shows. So mm-hmm. Especially I think they did that long. Right. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. That was January. That was January. And then mine is Robin Roberts, because you already know she's my ultimate favorite. And we'll probably hear her name about 10 times in this episode. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> but she, was, she told us that she said yes to marriage and it happened in an interview. And we, if you know, it took her a long time to come out, period. Her and what she called a sweet Amber. Mm-hmm. Um, they've been together for decades at this point. And what's the point of getting married now? But it feels like right. it was it was sort of one of these like. We survived COVID, right? Amber got <laughs> sick and it was like, yeah. we should it's do time. this. Yeah, it was time. And I was really happy for her. Because um, mm-hmm. it feels like her coming out has been sort of, it's been so slow. Um, especially with just how her job is just such a high profile situation <laughs> on the mm-hmm. number one morning show in the whole wide country. Mm-hmm. So it's just, she has a lot of eyes on her every day. So this was a big moment. She's often, she's been pretty private. And so in some ways, and so I, I love this for her. Yeah. Um, saying yes to marriage. I love that. Yeah. Letting others share in her joy. She's from Alabama. So, you know, that love that era where it's just like, yeah, you kept it. You either didn't say anything or you kept it low, you know, kind of thing. So it was good that she could love out loud and let people embrace her. Like, Everybody loves Robin Roberts. So like, let's let us embrace you. Let us know into your life in that way. And, you know, her being comfortable, comfortable enough to do so. But I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And ain't she from the SIP, though? She from the SIP. I think so. Okay. Tuskegee. Alabama is where she's born. What is that? Oh, are we about to lie, Google? Yeah. (laughs) I did like, I did like, because I was like, I know she was from the South. I was like listening to her master class earlier this year. I was like, I know she was from the South. So I was like, okay. And then grew up in past Christian Mississippi. So Alabama, Mississippi, you know, know we know, we know. (laughs) You got to keep that low. It's Tuskegee, Alabama. Low, you know. And then she grew up in past Christian Mississippi. So yes, yes, and. Yes, and. Good job, both of you. Good job, both of you. Because the way I was just like, mm hmm. (laughs) <laughs> yep. went to <laughs> southeastern louisiana university so yes you know robin robin's from the south south so you know you yes. move a certain way and everything but yeah i'm glad she was able to be open and let us o- into her life more because we love everybody loves robin roberts mm-hmm. like, you know I think so. national treasure god damn it you know <laughs> <Period>. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's go over to february yes 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 what was happening in february i was like i had uh so zaya wade was granted her legal name and gender change uh i just want to give some uh quick high level notes in here that uh Dwayne wade in august of 2022 petitioned the court on zaya's behalf to legally change her name and gender 
Um, she came out as transgender in 2020. The following November, her mother had filed her own papers asking the judge to deny the request. Uh, Siobhan was basically saying that Dwayne is doing this to make money off of Zaya. And so this shouldn't be allowed and she should have to wait until she is older. And Dwayne noted that while he has the authority to make the final decisions about the team because he has sole custody, he did bring his ex into the picture to help. She clearly ruined that and said, we're going to go about this anyway. So all of that to happen to say congrats to Zaya. Zaya honestly has been thriving this year and we love to see it. We don't love how the internet tries to come for her every single time anything is posted about her and just to let her live and do her thing. And Anna, thank you for adding on to the side that Gabriella and Dwayne did win the President's Award at the NAACP Image Awards for their advocacy on behalf of Zaya as well, which they should. Like, come on, parents. This yeah. is what they should be doing. Yeah. I love it how they stand in <clears throat> defiance, defiance. They don't really, they don't have to say much because they're just going to go through the love of Zaya and just being good parents and understanding parents. Like, it's like they they protected her in ways that like all parents should do, but it's mm-hmm. not, it's just not as common. Um, and the way they're just loving her out loud and protecting her is great. So, so I was like, fine. Like I just, I just saw her in like another like Puma's campaign or something. And I was just like, she is so protected and can be who she is. And I just love that for her and just how they're, they're maneuvering with this because they don't like get on social and argue people down or anything. It's like, believe what you believe, but we love our child and that's it. Like hard stop. So, you know, it's bringing people along, even if they have to be the first ones to kind of go through it and get all the vitriol. Like I think slowly the tide is turning because it's like, okay, y'all can feel that way, but this is what it is. We're going to love our child. And that's it. So, yeah, I think they've just been beautiful examples Mm -hmm. in in this era, right? Like Magic Johnson's era, there wasn't the social media to for him to receive all of the, you know, the he he got it. (laughs) Yeah, Um, but it's just not the same. Um, Especially since Dwayne and Gabrielle are are both public figures, Mm -hmm. right? And I think it's just been such a beautiful example. I've been proud of all these black parents that's been Mm -hmm. out here. I know I see, I I see what's coming up, you know, and I'll hold my, my comments for later, but (laughs) (laughs) I think we've had some really beautiful examples this year of Mm -hmm. black parents standing up for their queer and trans kids. Yeah. Yeah. I I love that you brought up magic Johnson. I also want to shout out Sade too like there are there are parents out there setting the right example within our community with that but magic johnson as well like i don't think he gets as much flowers but yeah they're just like mm-mm, mm-mm. love my kids <laughs> like okay. y'all think what y'all want mm-hmm. love my and let's babies. be clear these kids these are not normal kids these magic johnson's like six eight or something ej okay. is like walking yeah. through rooms like, <laughs> yeah. okay. listen okay. no, all right. i'm like five four over here feeling good okay these kids are taking they walk into a room they cannot be missed you know what yeah. i'm saying mm-hmm. their presence can is it is very clear that they are there you know and so i think there there's just so much to who they are um, and so I love that they are supported because we just know how many kids are not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the learning Thanks. part of it is key. They just have, you know, some people just have to see the example. They don't even, you know, know no better, but need to just see. And they're like, oh, OK. Like sometimes mm-hmm. it just takes that. So shout out to them. Shout yeah. out to them. <laughs> Continuing on to Proud Parenthood. This was also when the brat. And Judy announced that they were pregnant and they were expecting. And we got to see a beautiful masculine presenting stud carry a child all in the media. And honestly, the brat performing on stage with the baseball jersey, half button and letting the belly hang out lives rent free in my mind and is just a great sign of representation. So it was great to also see folks be more open, getting a full feature in people about their announcement and things like that. I'm like, this is the representation we deserve. And I thank them. Love them. Shout I love them. them. 
I watch yeah. them. We TV, you know, I'm always following. I think they're really cute. They can also be very annoying, but they can also be very cute. <laughs> like it, it, child, the baby voices and the beautifuls, you know, it can also, uh-huh. that is what my wife talks, talks about all the time. She's like, can you imagine saying beautiful that much? And I was like, I, I cannot because like I'll watch some of their stuff. But yeah, even that, I'm just like, I got to love y'all from afar. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> it's a little too much. You know, I'm going to love y'all from afar. I love but real love y'all from afar, like for real. Mm-hmm. But it is a little, <laughs> like, a little much. Right. Like, Lord, right. okay, let's just on. get to the all next right. scene, please. Come on, <laughs> but, Come on now. all right. <laughs> but I love it, and I love it yep. because the brat was just never out. Uh, yeah, and, but you know, it was it's always clear. right there. Like we always, always. like you know, <laughs> growing up, it was like, but the brat, like, <laughs> but you just had to. Okay, all you right. got to respect right. it. You, you know what I'm saying? It. You got to respect yeah. people's journey. But mm-hmm. child, when you fall in love. It takes two seconds for you to be ready to come out. That's when everybody yeah. come out, when you fall in love, okay? And I think it was just, <laughs> it is, that's is what Hello? <laughs> yeah. In love, yeah. It's a good for yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. And they were really kind. I got to meet them this year. Um, oh, nice. Went yeah. Through Swish, which is the queer basketball club here in Chicago. Yeah. Got to Nice. And um, I got to meet them, and I thought Brad was gonna come for me, y'all, because I wanted to talk to Judy, because I wanted to talk to a self-made millionaire. Okay, <laughs> right. everybody else uh-huh. wanted to talk to Brad, and she was so kind and like welcomed everybody in. It's like, oh, let's go get some drinks. We thought I was mm-hmm. going in for a meet and greet. She was so kind, but child, I want to talk to Judy. She came over there and was <laughs> like, "Are you okay? Not talking to me?" And I was like, "Oh, I'm so married. I just want to talk about business." Okay. I thought- <laughs> <laughs> you like, oh, you no, no, the no. tone of the you okay? Oh, <laughs> the oh, struggles respect. of a masked person Fully. talking to somebody. Fair. Just I, no, uh, oh wait. no, 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 not me. If I liked oh. them, I wouldn't actually even be talking to them. I'd just okay. be geeking out in the corner. Exactly. <laughs> like, that's how I'm that goes. too, I'm like, too nervous even, for all of that. Exactly. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, I just want to gain the knowledge. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, that's a compliment to you, honestly, for her to come over there and be like, "Are you good?" You know, looks at you, looks back at her. Oh no, G. <laughs> Brad been locked down. I don't want no problems. Right. It take, it's probably gonna take a second for that one to. Click. Brad's from Chicago too. That is that why yeah. she was there. She's from Chicago, right? She is. She's from Chicago. Okay. She was performing okay. at like the Bulls. Um, had this concert outdoor thing that they were doing, mm-hmm. and they they booked her to perform. And okay. Swish was invited to actually gift them with a jersey mm-hmm. and do a meet and greet. And they invited me to come along for the ride. And I was like, oh, yeah. So cool. It was cool. It was really cool. They're really kind. They're so sweet. So love sweet. That. Love that. It's amazing. I love that. Anna, can you talk about Black HIV in the South that dropped in February? It's an important <laughs> series. I think so. Yeah. I was like, oh, February. Yes, that happened. It was our, <laughs> um, so it was our first Cube original podcast that we dropped ever. And that happened this year, Black HIV in the South. How do we get here? It's a four part limited series around the epidemic and pandemic, some would say, uh, Black folks in the South and the rates of HIV and AIDS and how that fight is not over. And there's a whole journey that I went on following the quilt, AIDS quilt around the South with the Southern AIDS Coalition and the AIDS Memorial Quilt that led to the series because I'm up here and I'm like, I don't, I don't hear nobody talking about HIV like that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I don't hear nobody talking about it, but it needs to be talked about what's happening um, and the disparities and what's happening in rural communities with black folks and access. And how do we really get to zero new infections when black women's rates are on the rise, black folks rates are on the rise um, and access to PEP and PrEP are not at the same rates as white folks. Um, I mean, the stats are just wild. So that was our mm. first series. It got, we licensed it to Urban One's Podcast Network, which was a huge win for us as nice. a network. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So that was pretty dope. So that was a big moment for us this year. And y'all did that. Rightfully so. Yeah. Hopefully we can do season two. I want to focus our next series on Black women specifically mm-hmm. in the South. Um, and so I... We'll see. We'll see if Urban One wants to take that one on and we find, you know, or we do it ourselves. I don't know. But I just want to tell the stories. Yeah. Yeah. But then February 2, BG was back. Okay. And after (laughs) your year-long coverage of that, like, 
Yeah. What a moment yeah. for you to be able to witness that and see see that. I remember, I think I heard from you first that it was like when she returned as well as the joy of seeing her out in public again at an award show. Yeah. Yeah, it was awesome because we didn't know how that story was going to go. Mm-mm. Yeah. And as black queer folks, we really don't be, we are not optimistic about these situations. Like okay, we want to, we got some hope, but we just like, this, these don't work out for us. Um, and so to see a happy ending in real life, <laughs> not in a film or on television, it's just been so amazing to watch her be grounded, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. Um, and I think we talked about this during our last year's show. Like Sherelle Griner is the real MVP here. Oh okay. yeah. Yeah. You know, I feel like she is grounded because she has a wife who is amazing. And um, so in February she was seen at the Super Bowl, right? She she was out and about. She got stylists doing things. Um, and then <laughs> they ended up on stage at the NAACP Image Awards. Got a yeah. huge standing ovation, um, said their thank yous and thank black women specifically um Sherelle did and I it was just a beautiful moment that yeah, yeah. Sherelle is the the hero in in this and just an unsung hero in a lot mm-hmm. of cases but yeah it was good to see both of them out and about and enjoying life um yeah. Oh, anymore? dang, there was a lot of good stuff. Okay, so yeah, yeah Nico gave that amazing speech where he walked across stage all slow in that blue suit. Okay. <laughs> At the NLACP <laughs> Image Awards, like I'm taking this all in on the whole stage. That was definitely a moment. Um, and then Sam Smith and Kim Petras, right, because Kim became the first trans woman to win a Grammy mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. in February. And we can't skip that. That was a moment. Um, yeah. 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 The last thing I had for February was <laughs> Angela Davis learning she had ancestors <laughs> on the Mayflower, uh, which is a Finding Your Roots episodes with Henry Louis Gates and Louis Gates and um, just what that caused on <laughs> social media for a couple weeks where it was just like, uh, I mean, she could be shocked. Like everybody, well, she, you know, it, that she should have known. And it's like, no, no, <laughs> to have your ancestors on the Mayflower, like we at least within the black community, most of us understand the legacy of slavery and that we, that there was rape and sexual assault that occurred during this time. So some of Mm -hmm. us do have European roots, but to learn that your ancestors were on the Mayflower is a specific type of hell. (laughs) that I think that Angela Davis, like when that video came out, like, I don't know. I don't think she was given enough grace to be like, what? <laughs> like, you know, it's right. the Mayflower. Like, that's very specific. It wasn't and they just, just like sprung some... it on her. Yeah. They didn't yeah. give her a heads up. No warning. Real person, reactions. Like, let people have their real out, reactions. Said, oh, this is going to be good. <laughs> yeah. Our ratings are about to go up. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's what that yeah. person said. And they, they were like, get the marketing team ready. Yeah. Get the post this is one. ready. This, this is, is it. it. Find these this clips. It. Zoom in here. They were ready. And Angela Shana, was not. It's in one of their year end slides for, for PBS finding your roots. Stop. They're going to be like the Angela Davis episode, the impressions we got on that. Yes. Like that's a specific type of like, <laughs> holy shit that I think like let Angela just let her react. Let okay. That's all it is. Let her react. Let mm-hmm. her react the way, you know? So she had white people coming after her like, yeah, you know, it was like, come on, like give Angela. They, they were so happy grace. in that moment. Like, they to were try and claim so her. happy. I was like, yeah. sit down. Yeah. Angela's still us. Okay. Still, Period. it's still Sit fuck down. y'all. <laughs> it is still and pay you. Fuck y'all and pay us. It's still that, but you know, it's just like, yeah, that's a hell of a thing to learn, you know, live on TV and signing that off. So, but cameras in your face. Off. Cameras in your face. Yeah. The Mayflower? The zoom in function. <laughs> like, like, was working is, that day. Jesus. Yeah. Cause it ain't like we can name any other boats. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> that's what I don't think people understand. There were lots of boats. You know, lots of boats. <laughs> the SS everything, okay? A lot of SSs, you know. Yeah. Listen, a lot of them. But the Mayflower is like, The Mayflower. Fuck. Wow. Like, Damn. We yeah. can't name a lot of boats. <laughs> that's a, it's a different type of uh, shit. Yeah, <laughs> it know, is. So. <laughs> that's different. <laughs> it's different. So, so, yeah, that was a... That was a story. That mm-hmm. was definitely a story. <laughs> so. Wow. Wow. What a time. 
Uh, uh, well, that wraps up February. Mm-hmm. Short month, but lots of things happening here. Yeah, uh, always. So, Anna, I'm going to pass the mic back to you to go ahead and kick off March. Yeah, in March, uh, Queer News won an Ambi. Woo! Woo! Y'all are winning this year, honestly. Like, wow. Let's go. That was wild. It's still wild um, to think. <laughs> if anybody doesn't know, the Ambies are an award show for podcasting. It's considered like the Oscars of podcasting because there's a podcasting academy, just like there's a motion picture academy and your peers vote for you who are in the industry. And they had a new category called the DIY category, which is an awful name. But either way, <laughs> it's... Um, <laughs> The, the criteria was that you produce your episode for three thousand dollars or less. Mm-hmm. That's the category. Every episode, and y'all already know how many episodes y'all produce every year. And what <laughs> I'm not doing is spending three thousand dollars for every episode. Okay, okay. Nope. I think we had like a hundred some odd episodes. Uh, <laughs> three thousand dollars. So, um, yeah, that was that was a moment. That was a moment um, that I will not forget. And it was pretty amazing. I gave a speech that people still come up to me and talk about. And funny enough, um, in that speech, I talked about that $3,000, like, y'all, seriously? (laughs) And now this year, the awards are now $1,000 or less. Mm. You produce your episodes for $1,000 or less. So they made a change. And still, that's a lot. But that's far yeah. more reasonable. Yeah, I, thought I was only one thinking it. Thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, rack, yeah, nothing. We're like, Got okay. that? Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, no, that's a that's such a great honor, and we, you know, hope it's on your LinkedIn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and honestly, Chris, it is not actually. I was you looking at it right be. now. Update yeah. that. I need to update yeah. that before it's on my list before the end of the year to okay. add the awards that we won for the pods uh mm-hmm. to the linkedin <laughs> and make sure you they know that it's the academy awards yes of the podcast yes yeah yes yes it's important absolutely. yes no but that's that's amazing and that's thanks such y'all. honor and well deserved so thanks y'all and for anybody listening that has a podcast i mean you should definitely be a, applying to these award shows if people love your pod, guess what? There's people who are judging these <laughs> and they will love your pod too. <laughs> um, and honor, it is such an honor to be nominated. It's wild to win, but it is a true honor to be nominated. Yeah. When, because there's so much good content out here. Um, so yeah, that and was you're pretty. a part of that. Yeah. Whew. Yeah, I am. I'm, I can receive that. That's right. Receive it. There we go. It's the way that, that we don't. And we should as I'm over here rocking, <laughs> rocking the cute sweatshirt. Yeah. Doing the things. You are. And me and Chris kind of got the same colors on. Y'all, we kind of coordinate. We do. I mean, Good job, everybody. Me little, <laughs> give me a little holiday spirit here. Yeah. <laughs> I was asking my wife if this looks like a like a McDonald's like kind of worker shirt and all that. And it's like maybe adjacent, but they probably don't wear this color anymore. But yeah, I was like, no, holiday. Holiday is this burgundy, but I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah, we in it. In we're it. in it love it yeah love it love it i did have an honorable mention too for march okay bring it which was this billboard that went up in south carolina that said rejoice god loves trans kids mm. and this billboard was so lit it was on the interstate in mm-hmm. south carolina for everybody to see and i thought this was so dope because we already know what's going on in the south and this this is when all of that anti-trans legislation was really popping off every week. I felt like I was talking about another state in the South that was introducing more anti um, trans legislation or policies. And then they invest in this huge billboard, and this huge campaign um, in South Carolina. And I was, I was like, this is what we need. This is the type of marketing we need. This, this is where we should be spending our money. Yes. Um, is on these huge billboards and there were no pictures it was just big old words and i was like Can't this is sense. what we need mm-hmm. yeah yeah the heart of the stuff i hope it was at like south of the border if that's still a thing did anybody ever go that travel that like south of the border rest stop in south carolina i think it was south carolina where it is but mm-hmm. it's just like on your way to either atlanta or orlando they had it for a while but it's like 
one of the main stop offs, but like something just clear, just text, like nothing, just you got to drive by it, you got to see it. But I'm glad I like that. I like that. It's a billboard. Mm-hmm. Um, what I had for March or wanted to mention is that we had <sighs> more of these laws that were <laughs> depressing. Um, but specifically, um, this and this is global Uganda's anti homosexuality bill um, mm-hmm. came out, which one of the provisions had life in prison if for saying you're gay. Um, you know, anti LGBTQ plus legis- legislation blew up in the states, but also um, across the globe. And Uganda had introduced a law in March um, that risk uh, after the par- parliament passed a law to crack down on homosexual activities, um, which included the death penalty in certain um, cases. Um, homosexual acts were already illegal in Uganda, but the bill that they introduced um, included many new criminal offenses. Um, so again, this, <clears throat> this what's happening in the States happens globally and sometimes is a template and sometimes is, is absolutely funded by groups within the United States. So um, we started to see some of that jump uh, to other countries, what's going on here or can <clears throat> at least continue uh, which it did in Uganda. So I wanted to mention that um, it's kind of the downer news, but did want to highlight that. Absolutely. March. Yes. And continuing on with more bills that happen. So Florida's HB 999 bill targeting diversity, equity and inclusion on college campuses advanced to the state Senate during this time. So this was the one that everybody was worried about because this targeted diversity, equity, and inclusion, as well as critical race theory rhetoric. The bill also gave the state's board of governors the ability to remove any major or minor that is based on or otherwise utilizes pedagogical methodology associated with critical race theory. So if you think about like African-American studies, they wanted to get rid of that. Um, When this happened, a lot of folks were in an uproar because this affected the Divine Nine. This affected a lot of HBCUs. So many things happen. And shortly after they did this, they tried to do a take back seat to say that, you know, black fraternities and sororities are safe under the bill. Um, they tried to do a whole statement that said, no, it's not going to impact any DEI things or student led organizations. And as long as, you know, your speech is OK, we're OK with it. And that's what they tried to do. Um, it was a mess. And at the time that we talked about it, it was like, do not fuck with the divine nine like what is wrong with you to think that this whole nation global audience is going to sit down and be quiet about you trying to come for them to just exist so that tried to come to light and the people let florida know that this was not the time to fuck around and find out yeah quick on that they were like "Mm -mm, no it was fun to see yeah most of people didn't even know what critical race theory was. <laughs> okay. That's what was so frustrating. It was like, y'all, y'all have never even heard of this. Matter of fact, mm-hmm. you certainly can't define it. Absolutely not. So, it's yeah, just another y'all, distraction. Half of y'all already took the classes. Like you're fine. <laughs> so just ridiculous. A just a mess. <laughs> a mess. Yep. And on top of that, uh, it was March Madness. But, you know, we're only talking about women's basketball over here. So this was when (laughs) a lot of great upsets and things happen. You know, we saw Indiana and Stanford lost early. Ole Miss took out Stanford, which was phenomenal to see. I love their coach. Black woman. Amazing. Coming in and changing the culture at that program. University of Miami took out Indiana, which was unexpected. Colorado beat Duke, which was unexpected. Virginia Tech made their first Sweet 16 appearance since 1999. And they made it all the way to the Final Four and only lost to LSU by like five points. That's amazing. Congrats to them. Uh, Unfortunately, Iowa beat South Carolina by a similar margin. Honestly, these games were chef's kiss. They were the perfect way to lead up to the final where LSU then blew out Iowa 102 to 85. It was great to see all of the trash talking online was great to see. Of course, there were haters, but we didn't care about them because 
the joy and the celebration and was way louder, way louder, way more impressive. But it was it was great to be able to watch. I did all the all of the brackets. I participated as many ways as possible, but it was also fun to just have that schedule going. And I think this was the most that I've seen bars airing it and people actually going for specific teams. And I think this was the second most watched thing in comparison to like the NBA finals. So come on, ladies. I think there was so much leading up to that tournament being the best one we've seen. I mean, yeah. everything going on with BG just has raised the profile of women's basketball to a whole mm-hmm. nother level that no one could have imagined. Then NIL deals that mm-hmm. put these athletes in front of people in ways that they've never been in front of people before. It changes mm-hmm. everything. It changes everything. And then these athletes are just amazing. They just keep getting better, right? Like this is what's happening. And it's just so dope to see. Um as somebody who grew up in the Pat Summit era, okay? Mm-hmm. And the Tennessee UConn battles of it, old. Yeah. It feels so good to see women af- women athletes begin to get their flowers the way in which they deserve. Um, and then you get somebody, you get LSU with so many big personalities. Um, <laughs> you know, I can leave Kim Mulkey somewhere else, but the players, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Exactly. It just, it just makes for good TV. It makes yeah. for good storytelling. Um, and Dawn Staley, too. Let us not forget, you know, okay. South Carolina. I mean, who she is and how she embodies the whole thing. It's just, it's so great. The queen herself. I oh, mean. Um, last thing in March that I want to mention that was uh, also made news is that Spotify had spent less than 10% of their $100 million diversity fund. So that's an update in I hear you, I see you news. Um, <laughs> a lot of this stuff stemmed from this one specifically was Joe Rogan in the uproar about um, Joe Rogan using the N word being racist in general in a lot of cases and conspiracy theory stuff that Spotify was like, don't y'all worry. We'll create this diversity fund and we're going to, you know, amplify diverse voices. Um, yeah. Spent less than 10% of it. I would love to see an update on it to see where they're at, but yeah, one of those, again, I hear you, I see you things, um, language that came out of, um, post George Floyd that a lot of businesses made pledges towards and really didn't do anything. So see more of that. This became a trend for sure throughout the year. So I want to highlight that for March. All right. And that wraps up March. Let's transition over to April. Uh, in April, this is when Brittany Griner announces that she is working on a memoir scheduled for spring 2024. And quote, that day in February was the beginning of an unfathomable period in my life, which only now am I ready to share. The primary reason I traveled back to Russia for work that day was because I wanted to make my wife, family and teammates proud. After an incredibly challenging 10 months in detainment, I am grateful to have been rescued and be home. Readers will hear my story, understand why I'm so grateful for the outpouring of support from people across the world. I am so excited for this book. And the documentary. Yeah, you know, it's going to be good. So good. It's going to be so good. (laughs) (laughs) It's so good. I cannot wait. Truly, truly. And then um, on the flip side of more fuckery, more shit, you know, this... We haven't we haven't mentioned to Satan's name yet. This is not to say that any of the things were not. We just had to choose top story. So I'm going to give him this one to say that. This was a part of his never ending quest against Disney because Disney was going against everything that he was planning on doing. Uh, Disney is hosting its first ever American Pride event in June. And they announced that ahead of time, Ron to Satan decided that he didn't like that, said, what if I just went ahead and built a prison? next to next to disney or what if i built another theme park that's even bigger and better than disney i'm like disney is a city that is a city within your state it has its own laws it has its own rules it has its own everything and this was when this was when folks in the senate and in the rest of the government positions said okay He might be doing a little too much here not anything else that he had been saying beforehand once he went to attack disney that was when the people said, ah, 
you should probably relax, which goes to show how much Disney has <laughs> influence in these politicians' pockets. Money. That's They're another like, hey, conversation uh, for another day. Disney gives us a lot of money. Maybe you could just turn down the temperature. <laughs> like it's like it's Disney. It's like <laughs> Disney World is pretty much Florida. Like there's mm-hmm. Disney and then there's Miami. And that's what people think of when they think of Florida. So it's just like, I mean, try Disney if you want to, but and there was a lot of states coming out during this time, which made it funny where they were like almost like seeing like a couple's quarrel in the side person being like you know, if Disney ain't acting right. You can move out here to, North, you know, <laughs> like, <to this> state, <laughs> like, there's a lot of states that were like, yeah, we got you. If like y'all break up, like move Disney world out here. You can have whatever you want, like anything you want, tax breaks, whatever. Like mm-hmm. you look the other way. I could care less. So yeah, this is, I, and we, we clocked it because we were like, this is the beginning of the end for him because he had mm-hmm. so much momentum. There was a lot of stories about, and not that, I mean, no, actually he has, he's not going to win nothing um, in 2024, but like, no, there was a real fear mm-hmm. and that fear about DeSantis is like real at that time. But um, him and his boots. Yeah. Downhill from here it started with Disney, but um, I think it was also those white boots that he wore probably took him down if Great. we're being honest. So it Agreed. needed to. You can't mess with the kids. All these politicians got kids and they got grandkids and great grandkids. That's how old they are. Okay. And you can't mess with Disney. (laughs) You can't mess with Disney. That is an American treasure. And every time he found a law, they found another law. They found another policy. They found another policy. He couldn't dig deep enough. Disney's (laughs) Disney's like foothold in Florida is so deep. <laughs> they got their own fire station. They yeah. was going to have to take on all the things. He had no idea what he was doing. <laughs> yeah. um, and it just made him look like an idiot that he is <laughs> on a whole nother level. Uh, and then people realize he didn't have no personality. I mean, he's just it's, it's, <laughs> raggedy. Those are some funny videos of watching him like try and smile and have charisma <laughs> that <laughs> riz <laughs> and just be like, Ooh. people are like, oh, <laughs> like, he's it's like uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, they're like this ghoul. Like his policies didn't scare people, but like seeing him <laughs> interact and debate, it, people are like get that guy the fuck out of here. Just like mm-hmm. across party lines, like ugh. <laughs> DeSantis. So very interesting how he started the year and how he ended the year. But yeah, here we are. <laughs> here we are. Agreed on that. Yeah. yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Well, let's see what I got. Um, oh yes. Michigan became the 22nd state to ban discrimination against LGBTQ folks. So they expanded their policy to include the queers, which was really dope. Uh, people don't really think about the Midwest being like this amazing affirming place. And so it's nice to report on the Midwest doing something as progressive as this. Cause oftentimes people just think about Chicago. Agreed. Like, mm-hmm. um, so I, that was some really great news. And then my honorable mention for April is Duran Bernard's tiny desk. Such a good tiny desk. Did that. Such a good tiny desk. Did that. That the proud value family. Too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I love Duran. It's um, that's just a much wa- must see. You got to watch that. If you yeah. haven't watched it, go back and watch that. It's worth it. Yeah. yeah. My only thing with April, just quick note: Don Lemon was fired after seventeen. Oh, was that in April? CNN. That was in April. Yeah, the end of April. Damn. Don. He had a little thing before. You know, Don's always said stuff that's just like, all right, Don. But uh, April it caught up to him. And he was like, oh, by CNN again, after 17 years, they had a little bit of a back and forth. Um, I'm interested to see what happens in 2024 with Don Lemon and all that. Like what he does or is he doing anything? Does he have like a separate project? I assumed he would go the Chris Como route with like having his kind of own thing. But uh, yeah, Don Lemon, 17 years at CNN is out, got fired. Had a little back and forth, some breakout tweet or uh, breakup tweets kind of back and forth but Solid you know don't we all tweets. yeah yeah he's been chilling it. he ain't been doing much yeah it's, it's probably his best beard. interest he needed to, it uh, is he, he needed he, to let all that die down <laughs> he needed to let it die down <laughs> yeah <laughs> rest Listen rest like warriors. come back to this, come yeah. back to this. <laughs> i'm just gonna <laughs> wait break. i feel like the person who would get him back for an interview would be trevor noah on his new podcast i can oh, see man. that I feel like that feels right. Mm-hmm. The two, the two light skinned babies coming back, having this conversation. 
And I feel like that's that's when he'll return. He'll be back. He'll be back on something. Um, yeah. Very interested to see how it'll go. But um, he'll be back. Don will be back at some point. He's not mm-hmm. disappearing. So I'm glad he has taken this time, though, to just chill. Chill, Don. Smoke a little weed. Grow your hair out a little bit, you know, which I think he is and everything. Just. Oh, he's coming yeah, back. Take with some hair. time. He's going to come back to show that he's been through some things. He's got to yeah. have the hair and the beard, probably. Yeah. I hope and the boys love it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How you like? Do y'all like Don? I kind like I. I'd be like, God damn, Don, because he be saying some stuff. <laughs> like, yeah, where I'm, where I say, God damn, Don. But I don't know. I think overall, I'm like. I want him to do all right. Like, I'm like, all right, I want him, I want him to do all right. Y'all like Don Lemon? How y'all feel about him? I've been indifferent about Don for quite some time. I'm kind yeah. of just indifferent. Yeah. And, and it's hard because when you're on network television and news, like CNN, it's hard because th- he did challenge a lot of people. Like mm-hmm, there were times yeah. he challenged a lot of people, called them to the floor, right? The same time, you know, he did a lot of crappy stuff Ooh, to people. Don. <laughs> You're like, Don. <laughs> oh, Don. Oh, Don. Um, yeah. mm. So I'm a bit indifferent, but I, I mean, I want the best for the guy. I don't, yeah. I don't know, but. I feel like eh. he was trending in the right direction because he had a time where I just couldn't, I, I was like, I'm all right. But I don't know. We'll just see. I mean, you know, it'll be, he'll be fine regardless. So He is fine. He's fine. Yes. So, Don is fine. <laughs> yes, he is. Either way, Don is fine. But, yes. Yeah. Ugh. All right. We're making it through 2023. We're, we mm-hmm. we want to move on to May. We're on yeah, to May. May. Anna, you have to go first because you have the good news. You have the good have and the, the great news. news. You have the good <laughs> and the great news. <laughs> <laughs> well, BG returned mm-hmm. to the court. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To the WNBA in May. And that was huge. I mean, she showed up, her hair was short, you know, mm-hmm. looking all sexy. It's just yeah. It was just a moment because I don't I don't know if I believe she was gonna be back that quickly. Mm-hmm. Um that she would be up for the the moment. I mean, she just spent 10 months in Russia. Like what in wrongful detainment? I mean, that was kind of that's wild. And she came back so quickly. Um, but I reported 4,563 Phoenix Mercury fans showed up that night and gave her the, one of the biggest standing ovations ever. Um, mm-hmm. and it was 573 days um in between the last game she played and that game. Because uh, the last game was game four of the 2021 NBA Finals. Mm-hmm. And it was like 573 days later, she was on the court again. And it was just such a moment. Such a moment. She played 17 minutes, scored 10 points, pulled down three rebounds. I mean, that's an amazing day for so many people playing every day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> More than me. 573 days later. So, oh, the efficiency I mean, of those stats. Exactly. Exactly. Um, that was a beautiful moment. Um, and then the next one was lipstick lover, mm-hmm. lover, mm-hmm. lover. Mm-hmm. Janelle Monet just blessed us uh, with that video. Oof. Yes, she did. <laughs> and I think that was like, oh, I did a TikTok that was just that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> there were a lot of people in a, into a tizzy about like, it really, you know what it really showed? The people who hadn't been paying attention to Janelle Monet because there were a lot of people who were like, where's their suit? And it's like, she has been out of the suit for a while. Like, oh, where are y'all at? Where y'all like, at? Janelle like, it's just been, it's been a while. On it's the been internet. a while. Yeah, but then that's, you know, that just shows the divide of things. And then people saying that they were doing it for likes and all that other stuff and sold out and it's just like they haven't worn a suit in years like Mm -hmm. but you're not a fan so just say you're not a fan just say you don't keep up because this video was everything and set the mood i feel like for the spring and summer so i wanted to be at the party okay 
all of the parties. If ever they, they, they was party smoking, Every they was partying. Day. It was intergenerational. I'm like, yeah, I'd have a great time at this party. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody, I mean, I'll go. That's all I wanted. The way I scoured time. the internet for clips just to see what the people posted. But Janelle mm-hmm. honestly gave us a lot. So I didn't even have to search that far because then Janelle would just come out with a slew of videos between their page and Wonderland's page. I just said, thank you so much. <laughs> this is what we needed to help make us make it through the rest of this year, transition into summer to say, yes, we're going to have a black core summer. That's what we're going to do. And we have yeah. the soundtrack. Yeah. Yeah. And then my um honorable mention that really made me so happy was um Texas impeaching its attorney general, um, Ken Paxton, who was probably one of the more evil people um mm-hmm. of our time in government. Uh and it was really wild because the Texas um House of Representatives was Republican and they impeached their own. And I was like, wow, that can happen. They do that. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they, they do that but i guess they were so disgusted okay um <laughs> and he was just such a dangerous guy him and governor abbott together um it's just were incredibly dangerous they were investigating hospitals who were providing gender affirming care they were investigating families i mean it it, it was just really really scary um, for for trans folks in Texas because of this guy, not to mention Governor Abbott. So to see him get impeached was just a beautiful thing. <laughs> surprising. So Very surprising. surprising. Like, okay. He walked out of that office like it'd be your own people. <laughs> and we were like, that's right. It, and <laughs> should. <Not> too far. <laughs> do your job. And should. <laughs> like, do the right thing. Do your job. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I should also say they impeached him. Um, they outlined 20 articles. Um, he was fraud and political donors and doing favors to benefit them. And I guess the Republicans don't like that. I guess they do draw a line maybe in Texas. They yeah. said you were doing more hey, than pal. most of us were you know they use, on average. They, they definitely use pal. <laughs> hey, pal. <laughs> don't do that. We're going to impeach you, buddy. Pal and buddy was absolutely used, which spells like the doom for white people when they use pal and buddy, like, hey, pal or hey, buddy. And they did yeah. this. I feel like that was the guiding guiding words through this uh, one thing i want to throw in and that was actually an april thing but it spilled into may is rest in peace to banco brown who is a trans man murdered in san francisco outside of a walgreens by an armed security guard um the current news on that story is that the banco brown's uh family is suing walgreens in um, san francisco um, for wrongful death um, but wanted to mention that because that was something that happened at the actually at the end of April, but spilled into May. And we have another story that's kind of like that, that straddles kind of both months. Um, but rest in peace to Banco Brown. Get that Walgreens money. Y'all deserve. Yeah. Yeah. Walgreens uh-huh. also settled a case about them <laughs> being a big contributor to like the opioid thing this year. So like mm-hmm. get their money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like none of these companies are you know blameless so no no they're not on top of companies not being blameless the writers guild protest began yeah. in may to say y'all ain't paying us uh overall the contract was filled with fuck shit ever since we switched to streaming they really didn't update the contracts people were getting literally pennies as checks it's, it cost more to make and send the check than it did the amount that was on the checks and that just doesn't make any sense. And they're not asking for a crazy amount. They asked for 3%. 3%. That should just tell you how much that 3% means. Yeah. <laughs> That's all they were asking for. Yeah. That's all they were asking for. They wanted, you know, they wanted some health care. They wanted some pensions. They wanted some minimum payments for scripts. They wanted to make sure that the episodes had like specific room sizes, a.k.a. amount of writers in the room and things. And that, you know, they weren't just trying to outsource it to contractors who would pay like less. They just want a living wage, which is not a lot to ask for. So the the WGA had time 
to negotiate. They spent over six weeks negotiating uh, with the AMTP and AMPTP, and they couldn't come to an agreement. So they went into strike. It was the first time in 15 years that the Writers Guild Association went on strike. So that just goes to show how much had changed. People used to be able to make money and live, live well. And now they're just like, no, even though they're putting new shows out all the time and streaming it all the time. So get your money. Um, the ultimatum, the queer ultimatum mm. released its first Ooh. four episodes here. Mm-hmm. The first episode was released May 24th. So it, it, mm-hmm. it happened. Mm-hmm. And uh, what a time. What a time. For queer culture. We Goodness. needed it. Okay. <laughs> We deserve. We needed that queer Ooh. ultimatum that day. My Ooh. goodness, like a uh, hail mary, okay? Because mm-hmm. <laughs> we didn't know how that show was gonna go when it was announced. I know it was like yeah. talking about. It was like, oh, it's coming. Like, what's this about? We were be, all so Jesus. nervous, <laughs> so nervous. <laughs> and if our biggest complaint is about the host out of this, I mean, there was obviously other complaints where it's like put people's pronouns on the lower thirds. But mm-hmm. aside from that, hey amen. <laughs> it was really good but i didn't know how it was gonna turn out i was very like oh god what's this about to be yeah so mm, and we and we drank that down we did like it was the finest wine and it kind of was honestly <laughs> for reality re- and drama wise it's up there it was up good there. i think we outperformed we're like that we're we did second we season of queer did. you know because it was like i had straight friends like hey man what hey <laughs> is this what it looks like over there and i was like i mean sometimes yeah that like this is pretty accurate <laughs> queer so, content that a lot of my straight friends had consumed had ever seen in one and they were just like this they is understand. y'all and i said yes it's better over here thank you yeah thank but you they so ended much. Up understanding they saw the good and the bad because i remember that was one of your takes shane it was like like let it be some bad though too like let us be dramatic and all that stuff like i yeah, i think it would accurately you know, accurately enough mm-hmm. <laughs> depicted like what goes on. So like when people ask, I was like, yeah, it's, it's pretty accurate. I mean, it's not a hundred percent, but it's just like, no, nah, it's up there. That's pretty much <laughs> a lot of our experiences. So mm-hmm. yeah. Cause the boys get all the attention. The boys they get to it. be, you know, mm-hmm. all the things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we just supposed to be rolled up in a book getting you hauls. Yeah. Nah. Son, that's yeah. not our story that's not everybody's story <laughs> i did see a lot of women that were like oh i get how y'all you all <laughs> like because it's just like we be having some deep conversations we really get in there <laughs> real quick <laughs> get real quick in there the timeline is short stuff. like it is a short timeline we get in there we we get busy in a short amount of time but yeah also seeing the other half of that where it's like that's not healthy um in most cases like there's some outliers but like yeah it was just good it was good to see it was good to see because we've we've come a long way with queer dating shows i i always mention tila tequila setting us back but um you know we're we're progressing in the Still right direction you had rent free right there yeah it was pretty mm. bad it was pretty bad there were some great people on there but like i remember being especially embarrassed where i was like this isn't this isn't it this isn't yeah. us but yeah Tequila, tequila. That's who y'all found. So, yeah, that happens. Love it. Mm-hmm. And in my honorable mention, naturally, obviously, because we deserved in our Black queer ass summer, the Renaissance World Tour began in May. Her first performance was in Sweden. It was a beautiful time. It was just a countdown to all of the beauty that happened. Countdown to my Beyonce summer. It was great. It was great to know that Beyonce was back out in the world performing and that the world felt right for a moment because she was back on stage. Mm -mm -mm. And right in time for Pride Month. I was about to say, celebrating the queers along the way. It's Mm. beautiful. Yeah. We love to see it. Yeah. All right. Let's get to let's get to Pride. Uh, Chris, I'll have you start with your shitty news. Yeah. Get that out of the way. (laughs) It's like, but what's so shitty? <laughs> like, I voice. Um, so we found out this year what billionaires or some billionaires spend their money on. Um, the unfortunate catastrophic uh, implosion of the Titan submarine was headline news in June, early June, where we were trying to find it and didn't and found out it was 
gone and they were trying to go down to see the Titanic, which seems, I mean, I thought was conventional wisdom, crazy, like, and just haunted in a way. Like, why would you want to go see the Titanic? Um, but yes, all five passengers that were in the Titan, uh, submersible, which is submersible should maybe be a word of 2023. Um, looking up what that was and that it was essentially a rinky dink <laughs> like submarine um, unfortunately had a catastrophic in- implosion on the way to see Titanic and it was gripping news for the first couple you know days or so in in June and a lot of commentary on it but um, yeah this was a thing and again like just a thing of like oh this is what people spend their money to do voluntarily got it so there we have it mm-hmm. yeah leave the titanic alone like let it just we know enough about it he okay you know enough there's a movie just I think that's what, like that's what chris had said when we were talking about it as well it was literally what else are what else are we learning what are we what learning about it it's decaying it's a decaying okay wreckage. there is like a we... beautiful museum in ireland that you can go and learn all about the titanic it is very informative it is beautiful i have been there i have learned so much more about the titanic because of that and i still did not feel the need to go out and explore more about there's not anything else i needed to learn not yeah. anything else nothing else but ocean gate which was the company that developed the submersible submersible which should have been a red flag um, anyway really should have been a red flag, and nothing but red flags which we learned because there was a 60 minutes interview that had been done months before where you just saw inside of this rinky dink scam ass submersible um the ceo stockton rush who perished in this um accident um just yeah like oh they be I mean, that was the takeaway. Like, again, you like, you don't want people to die. But the, my takeaway was just like, wow, mm-hmm. <laughs> like this is what billionaires spend their money on our rich people do. And then also the scam of it all. Because, again, if you see that 60 minutes interview of that and, and just also hearing from people who thought about going on it, but were just like, mm, no, this is a scam. Like it was so rinky dink. It was like a PlayStation controller that controlled it. It was a lot of things where it's just like you want to put your life in these people's hands, but yes, the answer is yes. So, um, rest in peace to those who are lost, but you know, woof. Yeah. Yeah. That was something. Yeah. What else in June? I'm sure there are happier nudes in June, smarter decisions in June. Kind of. (laughs) (laughs) So what? I mean, a little, (laughs) um, (laughs) But it was still kind of tragic. Um, mm. HRC, the human rights campaign, some of my top ones, they declared a state of emergency for the first time ever. Yeah. We've had a lot of bad times, y'all. And HRC, in the 40-year history, Listen. this is the first time that they declared a state of emergency because of all the anti-trans and anti-LGBTQ legislation that was going on across the country. And at that time, there were only 75. I'm almost certain we ended the year with over 200. Mm-hmm. Um. So that was wild. But also the um, NAACP had also declared a state of emergency. And I think they did mm-hmm. theirs before HRC. They did. Right. And so it's just wild times being out here being black and queer. OK. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And then BG got harassed in the airport in Dallas, which was a big deal for the W um, mm-hmm. holding them to account around BG's travel. Um, how and also shining light on how these professional athletes are being treated um taking coach flights <laughs> um which i just i can't even wrap my head around cuz i don't have enough room on a flight okay, okay. <laughs> and and i don't pass 5 4 5 okay in my heart i'm 6 3 but in real life <laughs> like, i'm i'm strong I'm five, 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 five on my license okay but... <laughs> okay and so it's a good day. B- these these ladies are 6 3 6 8 on these coach I just and so to get off a flight and to be harassed by this content creator was just awful it was terrible um and so that happened in June and then Demi Lovato changed um her pronouns because she said that she was tired of having to explain they them which was just so I 
I, I remember doing a video just saying that you can have both, Demi. It's okay. You don't have to choose for people, you know? Yes. Um, and you also don't have to feel like you have to explain yourself. Um, so that was a moment. But there was good news, Chris. I mean, Jay Harrison and Alex Newell won Tony Awards, which made them the first non-binary identifying folks and performers to not only be nominated, but to win. And yes. they did that. They, their speeches were beautiful. They looked beautiful. And that was a moment. We love to see it. Yeah. We love to see it. Uh, my June items, uh, naturally, the Ultimatum season finale happened during Pride Month because that was the right thing to do. Everything it about it was as messy and drama filled as we needed. We do need a new host because. The way that a queer person would have dug deep into some of those questions and the things that would have happened. But she just looked terrified to even ask what was happening. And we were like, ask more questions. But, yeah, you know, ne this next season, they're already they're already doing the right things with working with other queer businesses and companies to try and get people to do it. They have Mal on on staff to help yeah casting people. so i can only imagine what that's going to look like so yay for that but also season finale did what needed to be done and uh illinois our home state for me and anna uh became the first state to pass a law penalizing libraries from banning lgbtq plus books so it was very exciting to see uh that we were taking the steps towards it our governor signed it in and said we better keep these books in these libraries and let it be known you and if you do ban books, then you get no state funding. Mm. Zero. Important. Boom, 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 boom. It's like, go ahead and ban try it, it if you want to. <laughs> no funding. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, you could do what you want. But, but you ain't going to get no money, money from us. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Yeah, love it. All right, y'all. That was part one of this part two year end episode. We hope that you tune in next week. Shout out to Sienna Liggins for our bad queer soundtrack titled me again and our sound engineer Cesar for making us sound like we know what we're doing. If you enjoyed the episode, please take the time to leave us a review wherever you listen to podcasts until next time. It's me again. Can we talk about things? I'm so sorry. If you enjoyed what you heard, rate and review us inside your favorite podcasting app. This podcast is written and produced by me, Anna Deshawn, and brought to you by E3 Radio, your number one queer radio station playing queer music and reporting on queer news in high rotation.